looked at today <clears throat> that, and I'll tell you guys, the, the question of the century is the final authority. That is the question. It's not world peace. It's not world hunger. It is what is the final authority. And, and I showed you it is not man. It is certainly not education. And by no means is it science. Our final, absolute final authority in all matters of faith and practice is the Bible. And when I'm talking about the Bible, I'm not talking about some imaginary book that exists out there in the ether. I'm talking about a book that I'm holding in my hand right now. This book is the absolute final authority in all matters of faith and practice. So review chapter three, we'll give you a test next class on chapter three and on the material that you got here today. And we'll see you guys next week, okay? You guys have a good weekend. See you, Doctor. Thanks Doc, you got a couple seconds? Yeah. You've been telling us that the final authority is the Bible, but, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, there's there's like 300 of them out there. I mean, which, which one are you talking about? Let me tell you, there's not 300. There's not 200. There's not 50. There's not 25. There's not 10. There's not five. There's not even three Bibles. There's just one. No, there's not one. There's two. Two Bibles. What, what, what do you mean there's only two Bibles? Well, listen, there's another class coming in here, so we can't hang around here. Sure. You got time for a cup of coffee? Uh, sure. Okay. Sure. Okay. Sure. Well, let's go get a cup of coffee okay. and we'll talk about oh, this. Okay. And when I say there's two Bibles, you go into a bookstore, I know. And you see a. Okay. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. And you see a bunch of them on a the shelf and you go, well, no, there's got to be more than two. But the fact is that every Bible that you can buy today comes from only one of two locations. There's a line of manuscripts that come from, from Antioch and Syria. There's another line of manuscripts that come from Alexandria in Egypt. Now, what do you know about from the Bible? What do you know about Antioch and Syria? I think it was the place where the disciples were first called Christians. Absolutely. We got our, our name Christian comes from Antioch. It was also the head of the New Testament church. When the Apostle Paul, when he went out to, on a missionary journey, he, he left from Antioch. When he came back, he came back to Antioch. That was the center of New Testament Christianity. In fact, many of the originals that we have today may have been penned there. All right, today in existence on this planet are 5,909 Greek manuscripts of the New Testament, some entire, some entire books, some, some pieces of manuscript the size of this sugar pack. The vast majority read with what is known as the Texas Receptus. That is the Greek that comes out of Antioch. So it comes from Antioch through the Texas Receptus into the King James Bible right here on this desk. It would be like this coffee, okay? This is the line of manuscripts, the vast, bigger than this one, because most of them come out of Antioch. The other line of manuscripts, which officially is known as the critical text, which if you think about that, just the fact that it's critical should tell you there's a problem, they went down to Alexandria, Egypt. Now, what do you know about Egypt from the Bible? Not a lot of good. It kind of represented the world. Israelites were in slavery. Absolutely. In fact, when God wanted to use a bad example in, uh, in the book of Revelation, he wants to say something about bad about Jerusalem. He compares it to Sodom and Egypt. So the only good thing about Egypt is it can, it can be used as a bad example. So. Good manuscripts went to Alexandria. Now, we not only get manuscripts, but we get something else from these two locations, and that's what I call a mentality, or a philosophy, if you will. The Antiochian mentality and the Alexandrian mentality, or philosophy, or view of the Bible. This one, Antiochian, the Bible is perfect and cannot be improved on. Alexandria, the Bible is not perfect and can be improved on. Now, those two, what view of the Bible do you hold? Well, this one right here, but. These are both still coffee. So you accept the Bible is perfect and it cannot be improved on, correct? Yeah, yeah. And you say they're both coffee. The problem is that when some of these from Antioch came down into Alexandria where they did not believe the Bible was perfect, they thought they could improve on it. And it's strange that people that think the Bible isn't perfect always think they're the ones that can improve on it. And so they began to make changes. Uh, an example, they didn't believe in a trinity. They didn't believe in a Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So they took the verse out, 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. And they made these changes, and they said that they were taking a book that was imperfect and making it better. So after they got done, okay, there it is. Drink your coffee. And drink it? No, thanks. It's coffee, right? What's wrong with it? It's ruined. It's Exactly. Well, that's the same thing about modern translations. When you go into a Bible bookstore, if you see 25 Bibles, you're not seeing 25. You're seeing these two. You see the King James, that's Antiochian through the Texas Receptus to the King James. You see everything else, it's the Alexandrian through the critical text to New American Standard, 
Living Bible, Good News for Modern Man, uh, Today's English Version, uh, Contemporary English Version, New International Version, all the modern... The NIV? Oh yeah, New International Version comes right out of Alexandria. Well, when I was like 12 years old, my grandma gave me a New International Version. In fact, she would read it to me. I still carry it with me today. And, mm -hmm. You know, actually, my dad got saved by reading out of a New International Version. Are you saying that maybe he's not saved? No, no, I wouldn't say that at all. Let me ask you this. Did your dad trust Jesus Christ as a personal Savior? Yeah. The Bible says the gospel is that Jesus Christ died according to Scripture, was buried, and rose again the third day according to Scripture. That is the gospel story. That gospel story can be found clearly in the King James Bible in 1 Corinthians 15. But you can find that gospel truth in many modern translations. So a person can come to the knowledge of their lost state and their need to trust Christ as their personal Savior through a modern translation. But if you can get saved out of a modern translation like the New International Version, why does it matter? Aren't they all kind of the same then? Well, they're both coffee, right? Yeah. You gonna drink this one? Oh. No. Why not? It's been tainted. It's corrupted. Corrupted. You can lead somebody to Christ, showing them 15, 20 verses, right? Yeah. When I lead them to Christ, and I go, I've shown you a dozen verses and you ended up saved. So what do you think is in the rest of this book for you? Growth. You can grow because this one isn't corrupted and this one is. Two Bibles, two coffees, pure, corrupted. Could you show me in here where this one's been corrupted? Oh yeah, in fact there's 16 whole verses taken out of this and I really can't. I don't want you to accept the King James Bible as the perfect word of God because I say so. I just don't want you to say it's got mistakes in it because somebody else says so, all right? Because you're making a man your final authority. Remember back in class? It wasn't man is our final authority in all matters of faith and practice, it's what? Bible. The Bible. All right. I will answer any question you have concerning this issue, but here's my problem. I've got to meet another guy in about five minutes. I don't want to. I don't want to leave him hanging. Here's what I'm asking from you. I want you to take what I give you, like what you saw today, and I want you to think about it. Will you think about it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, God bless you. Um, I'll see you in class, and we will. Uh, we'll get together. Maybe I'll make you another cup of coffee. Let's Sound good? See. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> it's good stuff. Thanks. It's, Thanks, it's a famous recipe out of Alexandria. <laughs> All right. Take care, buddy. Thanks.